and welcome back to Biggish Theories. In today's video, we like to talk about an iPhone's drunken days, focusing on a little breakdown and analysis of both the lyrics and the music video to see what they can tell us about the concept and the storyline. Now, after giving and take and showed us the boys waking up on day one in a new reality where everything is flipped upside down, Drunken Days continues an iPhone's journey across the border by exploring the confusion and excitement that this transition actually entails. Much like their debut, Drunken Days is a sound that can be interpreted in different ways, because if on the one hand their music reflects their real-life journey in the new world of the music industry, on the other it also portrays their fictional quest to achieve eternity by transforming into vampires. Now when it comes to the first layer of meaning, we can say that Drunken Days is meant to portray the conflicting feelings that the knife and experienced after debuting last year. As James Huff explained, crossing the border of their debut gave them access to a new reality that is as glamorous as it is unfamiliar, so the excitement that they felt in turning their dreams into a reality also came with a sense of confusion that is caused by entering a world where everything is different from what they were used to. When we dive into the storyline, however, Drunken Days actually explores the intoxicating feeling that the boys experience when they first transform into vampires, and if on the one hand this idea is expressed by portraying a bloody birthday that celebrates this new life, on the other there is also an underlying idea that this transformation might bring to the surface something much darker and scarier. Now, in both the video and the album as a whole, this concept is obviously represented through the carnival, because the carnival is an event that liberates people from the norms of society and allows them to free a side of themselves that is usually kept hidden. As I mentioned in my last video, the carnival is a celebration that relies on chaos and subversion. You remove the social mask that you wear in your everyday life, and you wear another one that paradoxically shows your true nature, so much like the carnival mixes fantasy and reality together, the new world that the boys woke up in is a reality where up is down and down is up, life is mixed with death and order is overthrown. Now, much like it was anticipated in Intro the Invitation, the boys were attracted by a voice that called them from the great beyond and that led them to cross the border with the promise of taking everything that they ever wanted, but as it turns out, this promise might have been a lie, because as the intro tells us, the flicker that first attracted them is actually a light that blinds and deceives. Now, this idea is also reinforced in Drunken Days, because if at the beginning the boys react positively to this change, soon enough the lyrics reveal a sense of fear in realizing that something darker is taking control. At the beginning, for instance, the boys tell us that in this reality without rules, their vision is like a glittering diamond, so much like the intro foreshadowed, they are blinded by the flicker, and the intoxication that it induces makes them love the chaos that surrounds them. The more they dive in, the more they feel dazed, and the more they lose control, but even if they are addicted to this feeling, the lyrics also tell us that they are scared because the intoxication is overpowering. As they literally cross the border between life and death, the frenzy that makes them feel like in paradise slowly changes their perception and their reality starts to crumble, so as they eventually reach past the door of this new world, the pain overcomes them and a feast of thirst takes over them. Now, this is the moment where the carnival concept really comes into play, because in the very next verse, the boys tell us that the reflection that they see in the mirror is unfamiliar because it shows the pitiful truth behind their mask. As I mentioned earlier, the carnival is a celebration of freedom and chaos. It destroys the mask of the persona and reveals the dark truth that we hide behind it, and in an elephant's case, this truth is the face of the vampire, which is the embodiment of the shadow that they had inside, but that is still unfamiliar because it was hiding up until now. You see, through the carnival, the monster essentially comes to life. The vampire represents their thirst for life that in turn leads them to their death, but since in this world everything is flipped upside down, death becomes eternal life, because now the boys are trapped in a carnival where life is mixed with death and there's no escaping it. As the invitation says, walking down the deadly path without fleeing from death can actually give rise to a wondrous creature, and this is exactly what happens to an hyphen, because as they walk the line of life, the boys welcome death and the vampire is born as a result. As it turns out, however, there might also be more creatures who are rising because of the carnival, because in the video we not only see a mysterious girl accepting the invitation, but in a surprising turn of events we also see Kay and EJ playing the role of werewolves. Now, in case you don't know who I'm talking about, Kay and EJ are former contestants from Ireland and two of the confirmed members of the new boy group that Hype will debut this year. 
Other members also include Taki, Nicholas and Kyung Min, and even if for now we don't know if this is gonna be the final lineup, K and Iji's appearance in the video ready foreshadows that their storyline will be connected to an iFans. For this reason, I also think that the girl who finds the invitation and shows up the next day might actually be one of the members of the girl group that will debut this year as well, and if this is the case, then this means that this group will have a supernatural concept that will connect them to the multiverse as well. Until then, however, we need to focus on an hyphen, because even if the carnival explains the concept and the lyrics portray their transformation, none of them actually explain what is going on in the video, and since you are here for that, let's see what I can do with the information that we have. Now, in contrast to the song itself, where the boys are still crossing the border and getting intoxicated by their transition, the video actually shows us that the boys are already vampires, because throughout the MV they use their powers on multiple occasions. At the beginning, for instance, we see that Hisong uses telepathy to make his presence known to Jay, who turns around as soon as Hisong touches his forehead. We see Jake using pyrokinesis, which is the ability to control fire when he lights up the candles on the cake. Then we see Jungwon and Nikki teleporting, which is a twist on the super speed that vampires are usually associated with. And last but not least, we see Sonu biting himself to put blood in his drink. Now, as we'll see in a second, Sonu's entire sequence has quite a lot to unpack, because I think that this section of the video essentially shows us the origins of their powers and how they got their immortality to begin with. Since this is a carnival where everything is mixed together, however, I think that the best way to approach this video is not to take what we see as events that take place in real time, but rather as a general introduction of the plot points that will be developed in the future. You see, if you look closely, what happens in Drunken Days is actually very similar to what took place back in Given and Taken, with the only difference being that Given and Taken focused on the past, while Drunken Days is obviously set in the present. In both videos, however, we also see small scenes that actually connect the two timelines together, because if in Given and Taken we saw Jungwon getting beaten in the past, dying in the present and becoming a vampire in the past, in Drunken Days we saw the boys celebrating the birthday in different timelines that overlap with one another. If in Drunken Days they get drunk, in Given and Taken they get dazed, if in Given and Taken they give their mortality, in Drunken Days they take their immortality. So what we are seeing here is essentially the same process but taking place in different timelines. Now this is obviously very confusing, right? But as it turns out, the outro might actually explain what is going on, because in the song the boys said that we are dealing with multiple dimensions. You see, in the lyrics, the boys have a dream, and in this dream they see a square mirror that reveals a twisted scene. What they see in the mirror is a completely different version of themselves, and this is none other than their vampire self, because in the song they actually reference Shakespeare's sonnet 43 by describing this entity as a beautiful and imperfect shadow. This is the same pitiful truth that the boys see in the mirror in Drunken Days, but what's interesting here is that in the outro the boys essentially cross the border through the dream by using the square mirror as a wormhole to another world. Now, this is actually very fitting, because in the Hype multiverse every single group uses the dream in the very same way, because no matter who we are talking about, the dream is always a door that connects different realities, different times and different spaces. We saw it with BTS, with G-Friend, with Tomorrow by Together, and even with New East. And sure enough, this is exactly what happens with the knife and as well. If you look closely, while Sangen is dancing under the bloody rain, the video cuts from the boys in the past looking at us through a square opening to the boys in the present fast asleep after the carnival. This editing here actually implies that the two timelines might be parallel dimensions that are one the reflection of the other, and this idea might also be confirmed by Let Me In, where in the teaser we actually saw two versions of an iPhone connecting through the glass. Now if this is the case, then the reflection that scares them in both Drunken Dazed and the outro might actually be the events that take place in the other dimension that foreshadow the transformation that each group in their own side is about to experience. If past and present are one the reflection of the other, these two groups are undergoing the very same journey. They are both crossing the line and they are essentially meeting each other at the border of the dream, so it would make sense that what they are seeing is the other side, because the dream is a space where life and death get mixed together and time does not exist. Whether this is the case or not, however, one thing that is now clear is that no matter what timeline we are talking about, Sonu seems to be the one that started it all. 
Now, to be honest with you, up until now I always thought that song was the first tempter and Son was the innocent one who was being manipulated into crossing the border, because even if in Let Me In we saw that the first portal opens after Son drinks the blue potion, this event actually took place after Song suspiciously moves in front of a camera wearing a cape. Sangun was the first one who literally got rid of his mortal form and got naked in the woods. He was the one who cracked the egg, the first one who went through the door, and the only one who was associated to an urn, which is something beautiful on the outside, but that contains death on the inside. All clues here literally pointed at Sangun being the mediator between life and death, but if this is a carnival, then I am the clown, because the mediator is Sono instead. Now in retrospect, this actually makes a lot of sense, because if in Let Me In we saw him opening a portal and waving goodbye to Jiangwan as he crossed the border, back in Given and Taken he was the one who beat Jiangwan only to act all innocent right after, so if we follow this logic, this might imply that he is the one who leads the others to cross the border where they receive their immortality from the lady in white. Now as I mentioned in my last video, I actually think that this woman is none other than the embodiment of the moon, who is a dark temptress that leads the boys to become vampires by tricking them with the promise of gaining everything that they ever wanted. If in Intro the Invitation the boys were attracted by the flicker that blinds and deceives, in Drunken Days the boys receive this light and promise to own it. And this light comes from the source herself, because if the lyrics mention the flames of a torch, the woman is the flame of a torch that bears the symbol of infinity. Since this is all about giving and taking, however, just like the boys take immortality, they also have to give it, which is what I think Sonu's sequence is all about. You see, what these visuals imply here is that this curse is meant to spread further and further. The woman gives her blood and the boys take it, then Sonu gives his blood and the fountain spreads it. So as Songun is overtook by its rain, all of them join Sonu next to the fountain. And since in the video we see Sonu bathing in it, my guess is that this might actually be a reference to the fountain of youth. Now, the Fountain of Youth is a mythical spring that restores the youth of whoever drinks from it or bathes in it, but since the boys are vampires, the source of their youth is not water but blood, and Sonu is the first recipient of this youth, which might actually suggest that he is the first vampire out of all of them. As I explained in my last video, the myth of the first vampire has a lot of similarities with the knife and storyline, because in the myth, the first vampire is Italian, he makes a pact that gives him immortality in the underworld, his downfall is caused by the love of a woman, and the people that he turns are considered the children of the moon, all of which are elements that are present in the knife and storyline as well. If in Outro Cross the Line we saw the boy crossing the border to follow a wolf, moreover, in Drunken Days we see that Sono is followed by a wolf as he goes past the locked door mentioned in the lyrics, so at the very least he seems to be the first one to open the door of the castle. When it comes to Sangon, on the other hand, my guess is that his dance in the rain might actually be connected to him being overpowered by his thirst, which is something that Sangon is destined to experience by fate. Back in Given and Taken, for instance, the lyrics told us that the boys stand under a rain of fate's arrows, but in the video we not only saw that they are the ones causing this rain, but also that Sangun's fate is written in blood. Now, in Drunken Days, this concept is portrayed literally, because instead of being overcome by a rain of arrows, Sangun is overcome by a rain of blood, which is his fate essentially coming true as a result of the carnival that they accepted to celebrate. What's interesting about this is that while we see Sangun dancing and Sonu bathing in blood, the video also cuts to the boys in the past looking at this scene through the square opening. Now, if this is the square mirror that is mentioned in the outro, then what we see in Drunken Days might actually be the twisted scene that the boys see in their dream. It's a different version of themselves that is overcome by temptation and reduced to a beautiful shadow that terrifies them. And this idea might also be reinforced by Given and Taken, where his song is overcome by visions of the vampire. Much like what the outro says, that is a vision without sight. It's a dream without context that is caused by intoxication, but by the end the boys regain their vision because they crossed the border and what they saw essentially became a reality. You see, even if for now there are many questions to be answered, what this seems is that the two timelines are connected by the dream. 
They are one the reflection of the other and the events overlap because they're happening at the same time in a carnival where rules don't apply, but to know how things will play out we'll have to wait and see. In the meantime I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please think about liking and subscribing. As always thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you next time, bye bye!